Hello everyone, this is Robert, and this is a Stratasys Dimension 768 BST. This is a huge industrial 3D printer. This thing weighs about 300 pounds and costs about $20,000 new. I picked it up for about $25 off of Craigslist. There was a business that closed down and they just took two of these, dumped them in the back, and some junk haul-away service was, had them on Craigslist for 25 bucks a piece. So, of course, I snagged it. The good news is, is almost everything is intact. It turns on, it works. I just have a couple little issues getting the extruder to work, mostly because of these um, silly little proprietary filament cartridges. But generally speaking, everything's in good shape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna gut the electronics and gut some other things, possibly the extruder head, and update this to all new modern parts because this is a relatively old model. So yeah, I'm just gonna go through it update it and make one ultimate 3D printer. But before I start gutting everything, I really wanna show you what this thing's all about. It's really interesting and it does things very differently than most um, 3D printers that you'll see. So let's kind of um, go over some of the features of the Stratasys Dimension 768 BST. The first thing you'll notice about the printer is just the sheer size of it. This thing is massive. I have it mounted on these casters just so I can get it around the shop. But it sits, I think, about 350 pounds. And the reason it's so big is this doesn't have a heated bed, this has a heated chamber. Most 3D printers use a heated bed and it just heats up the little layer, you know, of the bed that you're applying to. This thing just has a whole chamber. Everything inside of this gets up to that temperature. And it has these two huge heaters with centrifugal blowers that blow hot air into the whole chamber and keep it at that temperature. And it's got this um, nice glass door with this you know, weather stripping around the outside. And when the door is sealed, it has a solenoid that closes it and it keeps the temperature and keeps all the stank in there. So it's a pretty cool printer because of that. And in addition to this, you even have the two filament cartridges down there. So that kind of adds to the size. And then in the back, you'll see later in this video, all the electronics in the back. There's a ton of electronics back here. This whole thing is filled. So that helps add to the size of it. The overall build volume of this printer is only about 10 inches cubed, maybe 12 inches if I can um, squeeze a little bit extra out of it. So the build volume is really in here. And there's a couple interesting things about that is the whole gantry system actually moves further back into the chamber um, for like, you know, wiping off the tip and things like that. So there's a lot of, you know, kind of excess built into this, but that's one of the reasons it's so big is just the um, heated chamber, all the insulation, this is all insulation material on the outside and just, you know, a lot of the extra is added on. This is what the back of the printer looks like. This whole thing is a big access panel. You've got two fans here. Um, this one's actually missing the little dust cover on the outside, so I'll need to replace that. And down here we've got the uh, main breaker, which is kind of nice. And then we have the power inlet, and then we have an RJ45 and a DB9. So I'm gonna put these to use, um, either with the smoothie board or whatever I end up putting in here. But it's kind of nice to have both of those here. And on the side, you've got this, these three screws that are spring-loaded, and you just kind of unscrew those, and this whole panel just snaps open. So I'm going to do that. And this is what it looks like on the inside. There's a ton of stuff here. I'm going to kind of explain a couple of these things, because I know a couple of these things are. This is just kind of the main box that everything goes into. It's largely empty inside. It's just to kind of hold the connectors. Uh, you can see the... Ethernet's coming out over here and the DB9 serials coming out over there. And uh, this is actually a mini like uh, motherboard PC kind of thing. You've got the RAM module, you've got a little power supply right there, you've got the main processor, and a couple IDE cables that go to a hard drive sitting back there. So this just runs like a little um, Linux operating system. Um, under here you've got a 24 volt power supply, so a nice big beefy power supply that I probably will be using. Um, another power supply, I think this supplies something else. 
Uh, over here, I think this is like the power distribution board, the PDB, I think is what it's called. And you can see there's a bunch of relays, a bunch of fuses, um, heat sinks that go into the side of the cabinet, and these two big solid state relays. These solid state relays are what power the uh, big heaters that are inside of this. This main thing is like the uh, logic or control board. So this is the main brain of everything. This is what does all the uh, thinking. Over here, this little board that's vertical, this is the controller for the stepper driver. So this is all your motor drivers and stuff like that. And what's interesting is there's all these like little buttons and LEDs everywhere. This thing has hundreds of like test points and status LEDs, which is really kind of cool. I'm going to be trying to use some of the internal sensors on it. So um, I'm going to use some of those um, sensors to try and figure out, you know, if things are working properly. But yeah, this is your main um, XYZ motor controller. I think this is um, the wire leads that go back to the individual motors. So that's what this thing looks like. It's pretty cool. And uh, one last thing, there's actually a setup software profile on floppy disk. So yes, this is actually three and a half inch floppy disk and all the calibration data is stored on this for the machine, which is kind of cool and also kind of old. I haven't seen one of these in a really long time. Uh, so the next step is to take off this whole shell. The back door just lifts off the hinges. The outer shell consists of two pieces, a left side and a right side, and they're held in place just by a few screws. So once I undo those screws, you can just lift the um, whole shell off and expose the frame of the machine. So here it is. I'm gonna start first with the um, actual gantry system. You can see that this is a lot beefier and a lot bigger than most CNC's. This thing is solid. So it is belt driven, which is interesting, but um, we've got big linear bearings um, inside of here and here. And we've got relatively small stepper motors. We've got um, one here and the others are kind of hidden. There's another one back here. Uh, we have some um, temperature probes in various places, lots of wiring harnesses, lots of stuff like that. And um, you can see there's a ton of cables coming off of this whole head. The head has a lot of features on it. Um, down here, I'll get a better camera angle of it, but down here is the um, touch probe that it uses. It actually jogs the machine over to this side, hits something, this little thing comes down, then it probes, and then it comes back over here, hits it, and moves it back up. So it's actually kind of cool, and I might try and utilize that for the final design. And then you have all these um, big hoses and tubes that carry. Um, I think this is actually for the filament. The filament comes through this tube so it doesn't melt inside the chamber, which is heated. So it's um, kind of interesting. And I like the fact that there's all these wiring harnesses. I will most likely utilize these because um, I don't want to run all new wires for everything. And then we've got the um, thermocouple connectors over here as well. So it's a pretty cool, pretty beefy assembly. There's a little bit of surface rust on these rails, but it is just surface rust. I can um, brush that off, no problem. So check this out. This is the tube and hose that comes from the uh, main extruder head. And you see it goes down into this little box. And down here you have, um, you know, these little tubes. That goes down to the filament. So the filament's actually traveling through here, and I can kind of feel, you know, it's traveling up into this tube. This right here is a big blower fan, and the back of it is open into here, so it's actually taking air from inside the chamber, and um, this is actually insulated from the rest of it. So the chamber's over here, and this is heated. This is all unheated, so it's taking fresh, unheated air and actually blowing it through this tube. So this is really interesting. I'm going to see if um, maybe I can utilize this somehow, but it's a way to keep the filament cooler than what it is in the heated chamber. So that's actually pretty cool. If we look at it from back here, you can see that the um, back electronics panel kind of stops about here then there's a gap and then there's a little bit of foam. The heated chamber starts about here to here 
and then it stops and there's kind of a gap down here at the bottom. This is largely hollow, but that's where all the filament um, cartridges go. And then there's um, you know another gap up here. So really the heated chamber is separated into this little section and you have some kind of like you know firewalls that um, connectors go in and out of but generally speaking it's just this side that gets heated up and behind these panels are going to be the big heaters here you've got the big heater um, that's a pretty good sized heater relatively small wires i'm gonna have to figure out what the deal is with that but yeah this is your heater you've got this kind of um, compartment and it's hard to see but you've got these big squirrel cage blower fans that sit down here so they blow air up and over this little lip up here i'm going to get a shot from the inside to show you what um, the actual build platform looks like but the chamber is heated but then you also have this blade of air that goes over top of the build platform separately so the heaters look good and um, they look pretty beefy I'm gonna go back to this top-down view this is the top of the build platform it doesn't have any um, actual build plates on it right now but you can see there's these little vents right here and there's just a really small gap this is the gap for the um, heaters so as i just said you got a heater behind here the blowers blow up and it kind of blows straight across so there's one on each side so over the top of the build platform you just get this kind of blade of hot air that is focused right at the top of the extruder head and right at the um, top of the build platform so that is how they do kind of the heated bed in a stratasys dimension the last thing I want to show in this video is the build chamber itself. This is looking directly into the front of the build chamber. This is the build platform on top of which there sit these um, little plates that you build on top of and these little clips hold them in place. I'm going to do something different for this and this is actually the z-axis that moves up and down. There's a couple linear rails in the back and a screw rod in the middle, so it's a three rod system that makes this move up and down. And in the back here, you can see the centrifugal blowers that blow the hot air up through the chamber, over the heaters, and then um, over top of the build platform here. And so yeah, this is what the inside of the um, actual chamber looks like, and we'll see a little bit more of this once I start retrofitting some components in there. That about does it for the overview of the teardown for this printer. A couple things that I'm going to be doing. I'm gonna start out with the linear motion. I'm gonna start out by replacing the motors and replacing the electronics to get everything moving. So that um, stepper board in the side, I'm gonna replace that. At this point, I think I'm leaning towards a smoothie board with a lead shine like um, MX3660 or possibly a Gecko Drive G540. Um, either one of those should get the job done. One of the reasons I'm looking to do an external driver and not use the drivers on the smoothie board is these are going to be above 2 amps and the smoothie board tops out at 2 amps. Plus, it's just a you know, better, higher quality stepper driver, so I'm probably going to go that route. So I'm going to start with the linear drive system, get that all moving, um, check all the end stops, check all the um, homing switches, get all that integrated. Then I'm going to move on to the heating um, elements. So I'm going to get the bed chamber controlled with the smoothie board or whatever I end up choosing. So I'm going to move on to that. The next step is going to be dealing with the bed. For the bed, I was going to use PEI. I'm primarily going to use this for ABS, and on my TAS printer, I have a PEI sheet, and it's wonderful. So what I was going to do is use a MIX-6 aluminum plate. MIX-6 is a um, dimensionally accurate plate that's used a lot of times in machining for um, you know, like fixture plates and things like that. So you can get it you know, in a half an inch or one inch or whatever, and it's pretty dimensionally flat. So the idea is I was just going to take a plate that I can just kind of slap right onto that build platform, use those little tabs, and it would have a sheet of PEI on top for sticking to the ABS, and I could possibly remove it and put it back in. I might do some sort of leveling mechanism for it, but I might be pretty confident that that is probably really level, so I might just leave that alone for now. After I get the build plate done, I am going to move on to kind of all the final stuff like the extruder head, 
and all the really nasty stuff that I'm actually not looking forward to doing. I'm going to figure out what to do with the filament cartridges, how to route the filament through the machine, if I'm going to use the cartridges, if I'm going to do something else. And at that point, I'm going to see what electronics I'm not using in here, gut all that out, and then kind of fit everything in and, I don't know, maybe paint this up. Maybe it'll look a little bit better. So for the next video, I'm going to move on to linear motion and um, hopefully get this thing moving around. So I'll see you then.